Welcome to Socials with the Saints. Are you looking for hope and inspiration? Grab a cup of tea or your favorite beverage and spend some time with us as we meet role models throughout church history and discuss how they can help us in our daily pilgrimage of life. Hello, and thank you for joining us. Welcome to Socials with the Saints. Our mission is to inspire you in your daily pilgrimage of life by introducing you to the communion of saints. My name is Jason Nunez, and I'm the media production coordinator for Pilgrim Center of Hope. Hello, everyone. I'm Angela Ciolana, and I serve as media coordinator for Pilgrim Center of Hope. Socials with the Saints are opportunities to learn from role models of faith and from one another for fellowship, prayer, and receiving spiritual tools. Today, we will be shining a light on Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati. Yes, indeed, Angela. This will certainly be a very interesting episode. Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati a charismatic young Italian whose dedication to the gospel and relatable personality has impacted people around the world. Now, before we dive into the life of Blessed Pier Giorgio in this episode, I'm curious to hear about our in-person Socials with the Saints event that you hosted recently about Blessed Pier Giorgio. So Angela, can you share a little bit with us about how the event went? Yeah, it was uh, a great event. We had a diverse crowd of folks that came. Um, and uh, one in particular, I'll give a shout out to Daniel, who was um, very excited about uh, introducing everyone to his friend in heaven, Blessed Pier Giorgio. And um, we, yeah, we heard great things afterwards as well from the folks that attended and then told their friends how much they enjoyed it. So it was wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. That's amazing to hear. And you see that that sharing that happens after we dive into the story of the saint that we're shining a light on. That that's where that that's where that event really comes to life, right? Yes. Because everyone has a different perspective. And, you know, there's thoughts that are shared that is like, whoa, I never considered that. So that that's amazing. This was one event I truly wanted to attend. Fortunately, I was I was working on another project. So I I was there for a few minutes, but did, did not get to uh, sit and enjoy and sit and partake. But what I do, but what I do remember is looking out the window that afternoon, and I noticed that our front parking lot was full, and you know that's such a wonderful sight for my eyes. Whenever I see Pilgrim Center of Hope's parking lot full, that means that people are here, they're coming, and they're seeing and they're experiencing. So uh, for those who are, who are listening. If you, if you happen to be in San Antonio or in the area, you are most welcome to join us on the third Thursday of every month in San Antonio, Texas. You can visit pilgrimcenterofhope.org for more information about our in-person Social with the Saints gatherings. These events are always so much fun. So now, Angela, it's time. Let's go ahead and take a dive into the life of Blessed Pier Giorgio Frasati. I have no doubt that, of course, we will be inspired to live with hope. So can you please start by giving us some basic information about this role model of faith? Yes, Blessed Pier Giorgio Michelangelo Frassati was born on Holy Saturday, April 6, 1901, in Turin, Italy, and passed away on July 4, 1925, also in Turin, Italy. He is affectionately known as the Man of the Eight Beatitudes. Aha. Uh-huh. So I'm sure we will come to understand why he was given that, nick- that nickname as we unpack his life. How was his childhood and his family like? His was an upper-class, influential family. His sister, Luciana, was born just over a year after he was. Their father was the founder and editor of La Stampa, which is still a very famous Italian newspaper, and it remains, as I mentioned, high profile internationally to this day. Mr. Alfredo Frassati was also an Italian senator and an ambassador to Germany after World War I. Pier Giorgio's mother, Adelaide Ametis, was an accomplished painter whose works include commissions by the Italian king, Victor Emmanuel III. So the household often saw distinguished guests and extravagances in material possessions. Interestingly, neither of his parents were religiously devout. Uh Aha, interesting point to note about his life and about his family. So this was a family of high social status, right? You know, to say the very least. Uh, So curious, did Pier Giorgio follow his parents' example in his childhood? 
He was like his parents in many respects, but Pier Giorgio was also quite different. He developed a deep spiritual life from an early age, even obtaining permission to receive daily communion, which was very rare at that time. He devotedly prayed the rosary. He joined several spiritual societies, including the Society of St. Vincent de Paul at the age of 17, and then a nocturnal adoration group for university students. Wow, a nocturnal adoration group, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, At my parish, we have perpetual adoration, Mm -hmm. and it's those evening to early morning hours that are always a struggle. Right. A nocturnal adoration group sounds like something that could help fill those spots right there. Absolutely, for young people. (laughs) Yes, indeed, especially for young people, because they tend to have that energy during those hours. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, so was there another side of Pier Giorgio? Yes, he was a practical joker Uh and he earned the nickname Terror. So you can imagine what his practical jokes were like. He enjoyed sports and the outdoors. Um, While in college, he formed a uh, silly society for these activities uh, that included his inner circle of friends. And that group was called Tipi Loshi which can be translated to mean swindlers and swindlerettes or shady characters. Um, And everyone in the group had a silly nickname, and he wrote this document of kind of rules for the group filled with all these jokes. So um, he's also known for his uh, love of mountaineering and climbing, and that's captured in many photographs. Uh, Thankfully, the family took a lot of photographs. And on one such photo, he wrote the caption, Verso l'alto, which means to the top. And um, he's uh, very closely associated with this statement. So after his death, uh, devotees of his spirituality actually adopted the phrase Verso l'alto as a slogan reminder to pursue sainthood, to go to the top, to go to heaven. Uh, He also experienced the adventure of unrequited love and a broken heart. So Pier Giorgio fell deeply in love with a woman, a young woman named Laura, who was not of the same social class, and she also was not the same age. She was three years older. Um, But his affection for her was kept a secret for a long time. He decided not to act on it uh, because his family situation was very fragile. There were rumors surrounding his parents. Um, They were basically teetering on the brink of divorce, um, separation. So Pier Giorgio had this logic of, you know, why create one family with Laura to tear another one apart? Um, and besides all of that, Pier Giorgio was an average to less than average student. He attended public grade school at first alongside his sister, Luciana, until he failed his exams. And then he was sent to a private school run by the Jesuits. That was in 1913. And after graduating high school in 1918, see notice um, it took some time there for him to graduate. He applied his interest in mountaineering and rock climbing. And he enrolled in the School of Industrial Mechanical Engineering at the Royal Polytechnic of Turin. And he wanted to specialize in mining engineering. He explained to a friend that he wanted to serve Christ better among the uh, mining community. So he really sounds like a guy's guy, you know, someone who was (laughs) active, you know, I can relate to him in the terms of, you know, as far as student goes, you know, I wasn't, you know, leading the top of my class or anything, but he really sounds like a guy's guy, you know, Mm -hmm. with his family's social status, um, Did he tend to surround himself with families of similar saints, similar statuses, sorry? Yeah, uh, actually he didn't. Um, Inspired by Jesus, Pier Giorgio preferred to be among the poor and the working class rather than aspire to social acclaim. Uh, His pockets were often empty of money because of his generosity towards the poor, and his friends often paid for him (laughs) a lot of times because of this. And uh, there was one friend who asked him, you know, why do you ride third class on the train? Because obviously he could afford to ride first class. And Pier Giorgio responded, because there is no fourth class. So he really, um, he wanted to be among the regular, the poor people. While his father served as ambassador 
The family hosted a lot of large parties with important guests. And so Pier Giorgio, he, f- he fulfilled his duty, uh, his family duty by showing up at the party, but he would come towards the end of the party and greet the dignitaries at that time. Um, and once the event was over, he would collect the flowers from the tables and go out to distribute them to the poor because he believed that the poor deserved and needed beauty in their lives beyond the necessities of survival. Um, and we should mention also his commitment with the Society of St. Vincent de Paul required um, meetings once a week, one day a week. And then afterward, Pier Giorgio would choose to visit the families who were assigned to him from the society. So he was known to have names and addresses of people in, in need of help on pieces of paper in his pockets at any given day. Wow. This really sounds like he had these priorities in order, right? Mm-hmm. Like the fact that he walked around with his empty pockets, you know, you know, donating and giving money to those in need really, really shows that he he never had that mentality of, well, this is mine. Mm-hmm. This is for me. Right. right. So really, um, really a beautiful example. So the moniker that you mentioned earlier, the man of eight Beatitudes, it's really making a lot of sense now. I'm sure his, I'm sure his extraordinary example really left an impression. Yes. Uh, one testimony states, quote, amazed people saw this young man in the streets of Turin dragging hand carts filled with household goods belonging to the poor who were looking for a home. He would enter the most squalid houses and give away all the money he had so that he did not have enough money to take the bus home, unquote. Wow. Um, and by the way, he would, because he did that, he would often um, have to run home and then he would be late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the Turin parish priests, Father Barberis, testified this way. Every month, he brought the members of the St. Vincent de Paul Society to confession and the next day to communion, and he also received the sacraments. He spoke in a loud voice and throughout the prayers of preparation and thanksgiving. It was moving to see such a young man being followed by entire families, 30 or 40 people. Whenever I saw him, I always thought his virtue was heroic, unquote. So Pier Giorgio, he also, thankfully, we have some of his words uh, that he used to encourage his fellow youth. And so here are some of those. When you are totally consumed by the Eucharistic fire, then you will be able more consciously to thank God who has called you to become part of his family. Then you will enjoy the peace that those who are happy in this world have never experienced. Because true happiness, O oh young people, does not consist in the pleasures of this world or in earthly things, but in peace of conscience, which we only have if we are pure of heart and mind. While taking after his parents, Pier Giorgio also deeply appreciated art and music. And he could quote whole passages of the poet Dante. He often went to the theater, to the opera, and to museums. So, bless up here, Giorgio, he got it, right? Like the it, he got it. Every now and then, you know, we dive into the lives of these saints, and there's always that moment for me where there's that realization where, wow, this person got it. To me, that's that's always, uh, I kind of, you know, secretly always look forward to that moment of realization where I see that in their lives. Uh, You mentioned earlier, right, Uh, the Eucharistic fire. You know, that's not a term I've heard before, but Mm. I I like it. You know, it's it's uh, that's a really good, you know, phrase to use our Eucharistic fire. So speaking of the Eucharist, his devotion to the Eucharist is beautiful. So thinking about uh, thinking about the life he lived and the family he was a part of, how did the two mix? That's a very interesting question, Jason. Um, So his parents were very involved in society, right, in high levels of society. And Pier Giorgio was well aware of the political issues and struggles of his time, Um, not only because of his parents, I would say, but also because of his involvement with the working class as well. So Pier Giorgio enrolled in the political party, which at that time in Italy promoted Catholic social teaching. 
as well as the group Catholic Action. Pier Giorgio said, charity is not enough. We need social reform. He was a vehemently anti-fascist in this era, which was, of course, immediately prior to the rise of Hitler, the rise of Mussolini. Um, in 1921, he attended the Young Catholic Workers of Con- excuse me, the Young Catholic Workers Congress in Rome, and he was actually arrested dur- during a demonstration. So he was very committed to the causes of uh, the people at that time. Yes, uh, committed is the right term to use there, right? He actually walked the walk, right? So was he intrigued by a particular religious order? Yes, he was. Uh, Pier Giorgio was drawn in 1922 at the age of 21 to become a third order lay Dominican. Um, And by the way, St. Dominic's feast day is coming up on August the 8th. Since this is Socials with the Saints, I had to mention that. Of course. (laughs) Um, so, you know, this is Pier Giorgio. Um, while denying himself certain pleasures, Pier Giorgio really lived life to the fullest. He wrote, to live without faith, without a patrimony to defend, without a steady struggle for truth, that is not living, but existing. One of his favorite phrases in Italian, vivere non vivacchiare, translates to live not to exist. So that was kind of his motto. And today, many young people have begun Frasati societies around the world, inspired by his vision of living life to the fullest. What a beautiful soul. Uh, As you mentioned at the top of the conversation, Blessed Pier Giorgio passed away on July 4th, 1925. Now, Angela, you recently interviewed Christine, uh, Christine Wohar who's the founder of Frasati USA, uh, for a Journeys of Hope episode, uh, which is a different podcast Pilgrim Center of Hope creates and produces. Now, I recall Christine introducing Blessed Pier Giorgio this way. She said, quote, Pier Giorgio was alive. His enthusiasm for life was contagious, unquote. I would dare to add on this by saying that his enthusiasm for life is still contagious, right? You mentioned that there's Frasati Society's around the world, his influence, his, his you know, zeal for life is alive and well. Uh, these are times in our life when we come across someone that we observe, you know, how they live their life. And we want to be just like them, right? There's always that, there's that it they have. And what is that? I want what they have. Blessed Pier Giorgio, he's, he's one of those people. Yeah, and thank God for his example. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, by the way, uh, you can find the link to Angela's interview with Christine Wohar, the founder of Frasati USA, in the show notes. Journeys of Hope is available on your favorite podcast app as well. So, Angela, uh, before we take a break, I have one more question for you. Uh, you you actually came across a miracle attributed to Blessed Pure Giorgio. Uh, can you please share it with us? I would be happy to, yes. The following comes from the website Alatea in one of their articles written by Will Duquette. In 2011, Kevin Becker fell from the second floor of a house he shared with a couple of college roommates, fracturing his skull in five places and damaging every lobe of his brain. After an emergency operation, he lay stable but unresponsive for nine days. The doctors thought he wouldn't live, and if he did, he would suffer from gross cognitive deficits. Less than three weeks after his injury, he was wheeled to the door of the hospital, where he stood up, slung his bag over his shoulder, and walked to the car, tossing a football with his brother. After Kevin left the hospital, he went to physical rehab and found out that he was five steps ahead of the others there, including those who had been in recovery for six months to a year. On October 11th, he took a battery of cognitive tests and completed them in just two hours rather than the usual six. A month later, his doctor asked him how he thought he had done. He answered, as he says he would have answered about any test he took, I think I did okay. The doctor told him he'd done not just okay, but as though he had never been injured. He was cleared to return to college where he finished his degree, 
Now he works making loans to small businesses. During his coma, he remembers waking up in the house he shared with his friends and hearing someone downstairs. That was odd. He says he's always the first one up. He investigated, and in the living room, he found a young man he didn't know. Who are you? I'm George, your new roommate. That can't be. I already have two roommates. They aren't around anymore. Oh. He then spent a long timeless day with George. An ardent soccer player who hates staying indoors, Kevin kept trying to leave the house, but George wouldn't let him go. They fought about it, as if they were brothers. But George was adamant. He encouraged him to be patient. Kevin remembers passing the time by doing schoolwork, which he says would surprise anyone who knew him before his accident, and sitting on the couch with George playing a soccer video game. Eventually, he woke up in the hospital. Later, Kevin mentioned to hi- mentioned his new roommate to his mother, calling him a good spirit. After he described him, his mother showed him a picture of a man he immediately recognized as George. It was a picture of Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati that had been sent to his mother by a cousin, who suggested she ask for Frassati's intercession. Becker's mother did so and placed the picture at his side. He woke the next day. Kevin had never heard Pier Giorgio Forsati's name before his accident. Not only was he completely healed, he says that he's better than he was before his injury. In school, he'd always been the clown sitting in the back row, making smart aleck remarks and not paying attention to his schoolwork. From the moment he woke, his studies became important to him and his grades improved remarkably. The records of Kevin's case have been sent to the Vatican, and his recovery may well be the miracle that leads to Frassati's canonization. Kevin says he doesn't care about that. He doesn't know why God healed him as he did, but he's determined that God's work won't be wasted. And he remains confident of George's presence nearby and sometimes hears his whispered voice in his ear. Wow. That's that's an incredible story, Angela. Bless a pure Giorgio Frassati. Pray for us. Amazing, amazing story. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yes, thank you for allowing me to. Yes, indeed. So we are going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will discuss how Bless a pure Giorgio Frassati can inspire and walk with us in our journey of daily life. So stay so stay with us as we continue our conversation after the break. Hey, thanks for taking a break with us and the Saints. We invite you to help spread the word about Socials with the Saints. How, you ask? It's simple. Step one, invite your friends to find the podcast on apps like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. It can also be found on Pilgrim Center of Hope's YouTube channel, Facebook page, or on our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. While you're at it, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Step two, if you listen using an app, please take a few seconds to give the podcast a positive rating and leave a comment or review. Your simple action will signal to the app that Socials with the Saints should be recommended to people who are browsing for a new podcast to listen to. As we say at Pilgrim Center of Hope, every little bit helps. Thanks for helping us to spread the word about Socials with the Saints. Now, let's dive back into the discussion. Welcome back. After meeting Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati, let's take some time to reflect on his life and discuss how it can inspire us. So, Angela, what struck you about him and his life? Um, Well, after reading about him and really researching him, I think what strikes me is the vivacious quality of his personality in the midst of um, how aware he was of other people's suffering. Um, And, and, you know, that goes not only for his um, time amongst the working class and the poor, but also 
you know, his dad being so involved in world politics and so informed as to what was going on in the world. Um, obviously, you know, what we read about in the news is usually not good news. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and, and then on top of that, his, his parents' relationship was not very solid. So he had a lot going on, a lot of reasons to not be a cheerful, happy, vivacious person, but he was. Yes, indeed. Yeah, uh, he certainly was. And he, he, he was in position to live a life of you know, essentially worry-free, right? Worry-free and say, hey, you know, I'm good. You know, I won the genetic lottery and I was born into this family, right? And good for me, right? And uh, that's really not the way he lived his life. He, he looked to others, right? It's, he, in a way, he lived John 3.30, he must increase, I must decrease, with his devotion to the Eucharist and evangelizing and telling other people about it. You know, that's an, an inspiring person, an inspiring life for all of us. Yeah. Um, so had you ever heard of Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati before or seen a picture of him? <laughs> so this is one of those rare occasions in Socials with the Saints at this point in the episode where I can say yes and yes. <laughs> so I definitely have learned a lot more about him and his life, you know, working on working on this project for July. But uh, I, I was familiar with him, his life, seen a picture of him. Uh, the pictures that I had seen of him were not what we have and mm. what was provided to us. But um, I, I have seen him in the past and I had heard the story of his life, not in so much detail as we're going here. But uh, definitely, I was really excited when I saw his name on the list last year as far as being on deck for 2023. Mm -hmm. So uh, certainly July was an episode I was looking forward to uh, for Socials with the Saints there, just because I I knew about his life. Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, and as far as my familiarity with him, I was kind of in your position as well for the most part. Although when I went to World Youth Day in 2008, um, which was in Sydney, Australia. Um, they actually flew his body out, um, of course, in a coffin, mm -hmm. but they flew it out to Sydney for World Youth Day um, and placed it in St. Mary's Cathedral there so that we pilgrims who were there for World Youth Day could come and venerate his body. Um, we didn't mention here that his body was found to be incorrupt, However, it has never been on display for people to actually see. Um, I'm not sure if that was maybe the family's wishes. Um, but in any case, I was able to learn about him at that point. And they had this information available, you know, um, with these pictures of him, all these pictures of him and his life that were so compelling already to see Um there and then to kind of have him there as well was pretty extraordinary. So that that was my introduction to him. Amazing, amazing! Such a blessing for you, right? Yeah. To be uh, to be in the presence of his body, it's amazing. So Angela, how does the life of Blessed Pure Giorgio Fasadi teach and challenge you in your spiritual life? Um. Well, I think I would say like all of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if I had to pick. One aspect, I think, um, I think it is that selflessness that he had, um, and that just drive to be with the poor, um, and to he really how he really saw Jesus in the poor, but also uh, he had this drive to really be among them and to serve them in this extraordinary way and in a way that. I think is not necessarily unattainable for those of us who live in the 21st century, you know? Right. Right. I kind of like that, that he actually wrote guidelines for these practical jokes, <laughs> you know, like it's, you know, you and I worked on, uh, on, a, in, on a, on a podcast episode for St. Benedict and we made the comparison of his rule as a framework Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I like in this too, that, yeah. the, that he had a framework for his practical jokes, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> there's always there's always that humor 
you know, which, which is, it's always good in life to have some humor and have some levity. But whenever you, whenever you pull off a prank, if you will, the, the, the person on the other side of that prank is normally left feeling humiliated, right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure he was all in, all in good spirit and all in good fun. Yeah. So he took that extra step by ensuring that whoever was with him followed suit as well. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's that, to me, that's something that I can take away, right? We, you, you don't just have to have fun at someone's expense, right? It's do it in good fun, mm -hmm. do it in joy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and at the same time, I guess, bringing it back to what I had mentioned earlier, you know, he did have hardships in his life um, and hardships that are, you know, in some ways relatable, in some ways, maybe not for everyone. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things that strikes me is a lot of times when we who may not be living in high society, <laughs> You know, uh, when we look at celebrities or people that are really wealthy, um, we may think, wow, they have it all, you know, how happy they must be. Um, and that's just kind of, we leave it at that surface level. But one of the hardships that he had was um, that, you know, his family life wasn't all that. Um, and not that it was terrible and miserable, you know, but it, it's, there was certainly some lack there, um, in his parents' relationship, um, that ended up affecting him to the point that he did not pursue a relationship that he really seemed to have wanted, um, because he was afraid that would be so controversial that it might break up his parents, you know, relationship, not give him another reason to be angry. In other words, you know, yes. In doing so, he, he denied himself. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, he he didn't he denied himself for the sake of his family. Yeah, um, that's really it's really amazing. It's very I mean, perhaps not everyone's called to that particular, you know, way of of responding to that kind of a situation. But I would say that certainly um, shows us more about his heart and about his concern for others. Indeed, indeed, yeah, yeah, and it, it's his concern for others really goes to his family, and it goes to the poor, right? And it goes to you know the least, right? The least of these. And he, earlier we talked about him having empty pockets and missing the bus because spending so much time, uh, and helping helping clothe, helping feed, helping furnish, and bringing some beauty into their lives, right? Earlier we mentioned that he would bring flowers from family events to them. Because he recognized the fact that 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 could be their joy in the day, mm -hmm. right? You know, we sometimes we hear the term of "be the face of Jesus to others," right? You may be the only Bible that someone reads that day, mm -hmm. right? And he really walked the walk on that. Yeah, you know, very very inspirational. So one of the great things, Angela, about socials with the saints is that not only does it include this podcast, but we also have some downloads available for you to print, use, and share. And one of the best parts about this is that, hey, guess what? It's all free. <laughs> you know, there's no paywall that these resources are hiding behind. Right. They are created with you in mind and for you. So, you know, listener, just to give you some, some examples of what you have to take advantage of is you have um, the pamphlet about Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati, along with an insert that has the detail uh, that Angela shared with us about the miracle attributed to him, uh, mm -hmm. as well as a card with the quote from Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati. And we also have a picture with a quote from Blessed Pier Giorgio uh, that you can save and program as the lock screen on your phone. How many times do we look at our phone a day? Many. So imagine you go to unlock your phone and you see this role model of faith with one of his quotes on there. You know, that's some inspiration for you. Yeah. Um, and the image that we were able to use of him climbing that mountain uh, to the top, um, thanks to Christine Wohar, who is the founder of Rasati USA. Um, she provided us with a few photos of Blessed Pier Giorgio and the permission to use them. And um, we were able to use that wonderful photo. And I have that as the lock screen on my phone. Um, and when I I use it. I think about, you know, how he really worked to um, 
to climb to holiness, to climb to heaven, but also that he enjoyed that climb. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's not like, uh, like it's something that was a, a trial for him, right? That he had to endure. Mm -hmm. It was something that he did with joy. Right. And throughout our day, we're in different states of mind. Mm -hmm. We're not in the same state of mind every day. So sure, you can look at that picture, but you can look at that picture in different states of mind throughout your day, wherever your day goes, and you will find something different right. from that, which, which I think is awesome. Yes. Now the time has come for us, for my favorite part of this show, personally speaking, that's where we share a favorite quote from the saint that we're speaking of. So Angela, do you have a favorite quote from Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati? I can't really pick one, Jason. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the quotes that we um, highlighted today, I think my favorite is when he said, charity is not enough. We need social reform. Because um, oftentimes we think of simply, you know, let's let's give charity. I mean, we're certainly called to that, but that's not the completion of our call as Catholic Christians, as um, citizens. And the church teaches that we also need to engage in social reform as well. And who better to tell us that than someone whose family was so involved in the workings of the world and politics and someone who was also among the people that really lived the consequences of that. So um, I really appreciate that quote. Definitely, definitely. So I went outside of the quotes we have here. I kind of cheated, I guess, as you will. <laughs> uh, but I found this quote on the same website where the miracle uh, was located from as well. Mm -hmm. So it is this, Jesus is with me. I have nothing to fear. Which to me, that, that's so powerful right there. It's such a reminder. We get caught up every day in what we're doing that, uh, you know, fear can kind of creep in, you know, the fear of the unknown, right? We fear the unknown, but you know what is known, right? Is that Jesus Christ lived, suffered, and died for us and resurrected after three days, and he is with us. Mm -hmm. So that equals, I have nothing to fear. Awesome. Yes, indeed. So, Angela, um, as we begin to bring our time together to a close, um, you and I would like to share a special prayer with you, listener. So, Angela, if you can please do us the honors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The prayer for the canonization of Blessed Frasati. O merciful God, who through the perils of the world deigned to preserve by your grace your servant, Pier Giorgio Frasati, pure of heart and ardent of charity. Listen, we ask you, to our prayers, and if it is in your designs that he be glorified by the Church, show us your will, granting us the graces we ask of you through his intercession, by the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, we have come to the end of our conversation for now. But as always, we would like to continue to continue it with you. So what struck you the most about Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frasati? Please leave a comment on the YouTube or Facebook post that corresponds with this episode here uh, or the podcast app that you listen to. Or, of course, you can also send us an email. You can send that email to ministry at pilgrimcenterofhope.org. And we look forward to seeing what you have to say. And maybe you'll hear your name on next month's episode. Thank you for joining us on Socials with the Saints. We invite you to come visit Pilgrim Center of Hope and learn more about our threefold ministry of pilgrimages, conferences, and outreach. Visit pilgrimcenterofhope.org or call us at 210-521-3377. Socials with the Saints podcast will continue in this discussion format for the remainder of 2023. So join us next month as we shine a light on St. Monica, mother of St. Augustine. Her prayers and example brought her husband, mother-in-law, and son to Christianity. We invite you to join us for our in-person Socials with the Saints event at Pilgrim Center of Hope. Please make sure you like our Facebook page so you can stay up to date with the details about these wonderful events. On behalf of Pilgrim Center of Hope, we want to thank you for tuning in. We're so grateful to this month's sponsor, Sandra Baez, who made this podcast episode possible. 
If you would like to join us as a missionary of hope, please visit our St. Joseph wish list. A link will be provided in the description of this episode. Until next time, remember, we are a pilgrim people, and on your journey, you are never alone in the communion of saints. May God bless you.